Unpause. In the year... Fuck. In the year 239, the dwarves of the mountain hall, Sunny Glazes, discovered a strange pillar encrusted with rare gemstones. But within those gem-encrusted walls held something even more wonderful. Raw adamantine. Praise be the miners, the dwarves thought. However, soon the dwarves were horrified to find that the adamantine pillar they found was hollow, and within it contained all the fury of hell. Demons and devils spew forth from the gaping adamantine hole, coming straight from the depths of hell to reap vengeance upon the dwarves who greedily let them free. From lamer demons to vulture brutes and skunk monsters all came spilling forth. They slaughtered all the dwarves, and the ones that were left alive were either crucified in, in the fields or burned alive in massive bonfires. The lemur demon, the leader of the demons, would then claim the ruined fortress for itself, turning the fortress into the origin point where its devilish cancer could spread out into the unsuspecting world. However, one dwarf would survive the carnage that went on in the sunny glazes, and that was Vulture Cyclone Silver. Yes, he did indeed strike down three Vulture Brutes, a terrifying demon from the deep, deepest pits of hell. And he used their bones to make earrings. We do not know if he is the only survivor from Sunny Glaces, but I would wager to so that he is probably one of the few remaining who can recall its fall. Truly, Vulture has lived a blessed life. And if you see over here, in the land of whipping, in the spines of tapering, about a four days travel away, the goblin mountain halls of sunny glazes. Population 10. Most likely the lemur demon and his assorted goblins. I guess. <laughs> but yeah, look at all the artifacts that lie in this fortress. Most of them, uh, I was checking Legends mode, and the Lemur Demon used like a bunch of them to murder, like, I think like over 2,000 dwarves. And then he ate like the bodies, crucified some of them, burned them in a massive bonfire. And yeah, and I was like, during last episode, I was wondering, Okay, what the hell is a vulture brute? A vulture brute is a frickin' demon, and somehow vulture killed three of them? Well, the entire rest of the fortress fell around him, so that's just metal. Anyway, getting back to our fortress. Uh, this In this episode, uh, I'm going to be editing a lot more. going to be cutting out a lot of stuff. I only want like the absolute very best. So, we're going to get this all figured out, start mining this, fill this up, oh, and also finish constructing our Craftsworth Guild over here, and yeah, it should be an eventual episode. Ah, uh, yes, the outpost Lily's on, Saxul has arrived. With it, his frickin' caravan. Because, I, oh yeah, I've lost track of time. It is early autumn, so... The dwarves should be coming with their trade goods. I'll get back to you... Probably after we finish trading. I don't know exactly what... We're gonna want, or what we can even trade, but... We've been working on, on like, making pond turtle crafts. So we're probably just gonna sell them a bunch of those. 
Oh, okay, so, uh, we haven't even traded it yet, but a group of vultures came in and, like, apparently started attacking our spear dwarf. Uh, no, the trader spear dwarf. And, I mean, the spear dwarf fucked it up pretty badly with the steel spear. But I, I have no idea why the vultures would even want to attack the traders. I, I, I don't really... I don't really know why. It doesn't make much sense to me. A apparently the vultures are just attacking everyone. Which, you know, maybe vulture <laughs> could do something about it. I mean, you killed three vulture demons. Surely a uh, actual just normal vulture, you know, wouldn't be... Wouldn't be too bad. But, well, uh, what do I know? Maybe the actual vultures are more dangerous. And I don't even know if we can trade anymore, because maybe the... <laughs> I, I don't even know what's happening. The, the giraffes are running around. I, I don't know. I don't know. Damn. Okay, so apparently our alpaca is a beast. It just fucking, like, messed up this vulture that for some reason was trying to attack it. Broke its, like, foot. Bruised its guts. Now, I, I don't think it can even fly anymore. It's just, like crawled in around vomiting which deserved absolutely freaking deserved yeah there's just a left wing and a foot I, I don't know <laughs> okay so yeah apparently our freaking alpaca managed to kill a vulture brutal okay well we managed to trade even with all the vulture attacks uh, we got a couple of instruments, some food, and, uh, <laughs> honestly, they kind, of, we, they kind of scammed us. Like, they took pretty much everything. We had to, like, start selling cups and mugs for it. But, you know, I mean, it had to be done, had to be done. The fortress has attracted no migrants this season. Second time that's happened, kind of getting worried that maybe 15 dwarfs is all we're going to have, which is five less than what you need to even like, get uh, artifacts to get them to even like start producing them, which uh, that's going to kind of suck. Oh, and in other news, we've captured a vulture in a wooden cage. And now, usually we are like, okay, we butcher it, but I think, you know, our one of our dwarves is named Vulture. Kind of like turned into a pet. That's what I'm thinking. So, yep, we're going to train that Vulture up. And, I don't know, put it in his bedroom one day, I guess. <laughs> Would he like that? I hope so. So I just checked, and we captured two vultures, a male and a female. So we have a breeding pair of vultures, which I think is perfect. I mean, imagine all the stuff we could do with those guys. And oh, I haven't shown you this. So this right here is going to be like our trap hall slash where the merchants get in so this is all work in progress up here up top but you go down here 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 then you come here the goblins are marching 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 and then here is a flooding chamber a work in progress one you go up here go up here and that's going to be connected to the ocean and now this is all going to be filled all one, two, three, four, five, six. Sixty levels full of like salt water are just gonna be instantly dumped on them. And then we're gonna have a drainage gate here that leads to the caverns. While also allowing the merchants to pass through to here to go trade with us. So I think I think it's gonna be perfect. But it uh if we keep only having 15 dwarves it may be pointless because uh, we won't ever 
won't ever actually uh, see a goblin siege if you only have 15 dwarves, which kind of sucks. So I'm hoping the migrants, you know, like, learn about us and are like, oh, oh okay, yeah, we'll come to your uh, blood-soaked fortress, yeah. And also, there's fucking giraffes in our fucking fortress again. These bastards, I tell ya. And when we fixed the bridge, it's no longer uh, has any stone underneath. Because I've added a second one so that uh, traders, you know, can just come across here and trade. I think, I don't think the traders can bring their caravan through the water. Because this is going to be filled with, like, a little bit of water. I don't know if they would, like, bring their caravan through the water. So you might just have, like, their depot right here. Oh, and as you can see, it's all dried out now, except for, like, a few little wet spots. And then this is all nice and dried out. And the river is still full, though. Seven out of seven. And then there's just a little crack here that goes down a bit. And this is, I've uh, blueprinted this out. You can like, okay, so we're going to channel this out. And then bing, it opens up to this. And then this is going to be our tavern part right here. And then we're going to have another layer that goes like channel, channel, channel around the outside. And that's going to be our, uh, uh, hmm, either our temple or our, uh, living quarters and this section right here is our food it's pretty big this is going to be like our stills and uh kitchens and stuff but up here is going to be like storage and you might even have to expand it because i think we're going to have a lot of like food a lot of food here so it's like you know better be prepared and i hope these freaking giraffes leave okay up they're walking up the stairs again perfect um we had a few vultures die. They were just punched to death or something. A reindeer bull died. I, cause I thought there was like another reindeer, but it was a reindeer cow, and I thought that was the bull. But no, it just starved to death in a cage. In a cage, so I was like, eh. Oh well, he is, his corpse is dumped in this lead cage, <laughs> dumped into the river. Someone else's problem now. Anyway, uh, I'll get back to you when something interesting happens. Oh my god, guys, we caught a fucking giraffe. Finally, a female one. So, you know, hopefully, we can also use that. We, we could, like, imagine a bunch of giraffes running around down here. And, like, vultures flying through the sky. Or maybe we'll just keep the vultures cage and, like, put them in his room. I don't know. Well, well, well. Looks like we're not staying at 15 population for long. Because we just had our first baby born. From Vukar Flesh Handles. And Vulture. <laughs> A little baby boy. Gah. Zolban Spiritcraft. Good name. Good analytical ability. Disdains power. High willpower. Emotionally obsessive. Disdains so stoicism. Vain. Now if you look at his description. He is a he is wiry. His medium length beard is neatly combed. His very long sideburns are braided. His very long mustache is arranged in double braids. His very short hair is neatly combed. He has a very high pitched voice. He has a, a broad chin. His thin iris to close set aquamarine eyes are round. His teeth are gaped are gapped. His somewhat tall ears are somewhat splayed out. His hair is chocolate, his skin is copper. What a beautiful gap toothed baby. <laughs> uh, well, Zolban I mean yeah, Zolban Spiritcraft. I hope you make your mother, Vukar, f uh, flesh handles here a little bit happier. Because she is still the only pissed off dwarf in the fortress. So please. 
I mean, yeah, I gave birth to a boy. Such adoration, I feel. So, you know what? This might be a good thing for her. And it's her only son, too. Well, Vukar, I wish you best of luck. And would you look at this? This is not human blood or ocean waves. This is rain. It's raining water instead of human blood. That's... I never thought I'd see the day. It's actually like washing the human blood away. Wow. Yep, look at that. Oh my god. I did I didn't I thought it couldn't even rain. <laughs> That's incredible. Anyways, a uh, Okay, here it is. Okay, so this is our drowning chamber. We just gotta put the bridge in place, but yep, see here, right here, we're just gonna channel these out. Water, and then the seawater's all gonna come flooding in. But do 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 do. And then no, it's so we're a bunch of goblins and we're going washing and walking through you, and it's like, oh well, no, water, and we all drown to death. That's about the plan. Okay, and what I forgot to uh, show you guys is that I also bought some instruments when the dwarves came. I think two of them. This is a giant blue jay bone stag shell. The keyboard is made from peach wood. The console is made from giant blue jay bone. The pipes are made from mica. The pump is made from permission wood. The stag shell is a huge stationary bone musical instrument which uses a wooden pump to send water into a chamber ultimately supplying air to blow through any of 414 stone pipes. Okay guys, I was going to go, oh yeah, I'll, I'll go show them the instruments, but I'm not drawing 414 stone pipes. Uh-uh, I ain't drawing 414 stone pipes. That's where I draw the line. Okay, well, I mean, picture that in your head. 414 goddamn pipes? Either those are very tiny pipes, or that, that is a... But like, that's like, in, like one of those organs. They have to build an entire church around it. And then I think the other one I got was a purring maggot leather Eisden. This is a this is a superior quality purring maggot leather Eisden. The bellows is made from giant dingo leather. The bag is made from purring maggot leather. The melody pipe is made from earthenware. The drone pipe is made from giant coyote bone. The Eisden is a mid-sized handheld wind instrument through which constant airflow is maintained by use of a leather bag itself supplied by leather billows. The musician selects the pitch by stopping the holes in the ceramic melody pipe attached to the bag. The melody pipe is a conical bore double tube with flared bells. A bone drone pipe provides constant accompaniment. The instrument has a nearly four octave range flowing from a mid to low to high pitch. At all pitches, the instrument has a smooth evolving timbre. It has three registers. The low register has a fluid slicing timbre. The middle register begins at a middle pitch and has a breezy floating timbre. The high register begins at a mid high pitch and has a light wispy timbre. Oh, and in case you guys are wondering, uh, Vukar Flesh Handles isn't fucking completely pissed off. He's only very kind of sort of pissed off. And oh, Nelly. We just caught ourselves a male giraffe. We caught another, another giraffe, but it was a female. So now we have a breeding pair of vultures and giraffes. So yeah, picture, picture this. Bunch of like vultures flying around, a couple of giraffes running around. Oh man.
It's going to be perfect. Well, well, well. Year two has come. Uh, still work. We got this finished, mostly. We just need to put this wall up and put the ceiling on. But yeah, I added uh, craft work workshops in here. Carpenters and some jewelers. Ah, uh, yes, an elven caravan from from Ler Lemire. From Ler Amir has arrived. And you may be asking yourself, Hunter, what? an elven caravan from Ler Amir has arrived. And you may be asking yourself, well, why didn't the elves show up uh, last time? Well, my dear viewer, it's because off camera I sent a little expedition to demand tribute from the elves all the way down here. Because uh, the elves didn't know I, our fortress existed, so I pretty much sent uh, one dwarf out there to be like, Hey, we are, we're up here. Come trade with us. So now that they know we exist. Yeah, but you, you have to demand tribute from them. It's not really like a demand tribute. It's more like, hey, we exist. Come trade with us. That's the tribute. Yay, and they brought a giant magpie and a horse. Yahoo! And you know, let's go see what these elves look like. Ola lock butted. Ugh. His hair is extremely long. He is tall and very muscular. His spring green eyes are slit. His nose is hooked. His somewhat narrow head is very short. His eyelashes are short. His ears have small lobes. His hair is saffron. His skin is copper. Okay, and then a Mathai hoist coastal. His hair is extremely long. He is tall and very fat. His nose bridge is convex. He has a clear voice. His head is somewhat short. His hair is silver. His skin is pale brown. His eyes are fern green. Well, I won't be taking your animals, but, you know, they do probably have some weird elven instruments that I'd like to acquire. So, what did we buy from the elves? Well, they ha had a worm in a wooden cage. So we bought that because... It because the thought of just like carrying a worm and like, wouldn't the worm just wiggle out of the wooden cage? We also bought some musical instruments. Let's go check those out. It was a... Oh yes. Three of them. A growing maple Sophie? This is a growing maple Sophie. The frame is made from maple. The body is made from bayberry wood. The strings are made from giant case spider silk. The Sophie is a huge stationary silk stringed instrument with a wooden frame and a wooden body. The strings are suspended from the frame down to the body and the musician plucks the 33 strings. Tuning is accomplished by pegs. The instrument has a four octave range. And you know what, I'm not gonna bore you guys with all that like timber and I don't understand any of that stuff anyway so yeah okay we bought that one and we also bought a freaking pole letha this is a grown pair of wood pole letha the body is made from pear wood the strings are made from forgotten beast silk a polefa is a large stationary silk string instrument with a wooden body. The instrument rests flat as the mission plucks the 50 main strings. Seven drone strings are occasionally plunked. The musician can alter the pitch of a string by stopping it against the body. Tuning is possible with adjustable bridges. Tuning is also possible using small levers. O okay, I don't know how I'm going to draw that, but sounds interesting. See, you know, the reason why I like 
drawing instruments because I know nothing about them so like that made like no sense to me I'm like uh, okay what the fuck does that mean <laughs> and uh, the final one here is a grown peach wood FMI this is a grown peach wood FMI the FMI is a small handheld wood instrument consisting of four adjacent cylindrical wooden pipes a musician blows into the fipple at each end of the pipe the instrument has a four octave range going from a middle to extremely high pitch Okay, I mean, that one's pretty simple. And oh my god. Some migrants have arrived. Bringing us up to 20. Yes. Oh my god, I thought they would... Honestly, I thought we were going to be stuck at uh, 15 drawers forever. But 20 is a good number. 20 is a great number. Who do we got here? Is 20 all of them? Nope. 21, 22, 23, 24... 25, 26, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, 30. Je Jesus, so we literally just doubled our population. Uh, okay, yeah, we're going to need a bit more beds, guys. <laughs> we're going to need a bit more. Okay, we'll screw that. We're gonna need a bit more beds, just a bit more beds. So, uh, the originally this is just gonna be for like the carpenters and stuff, but I, I think we could just turn this into, you know, some bedrooms. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so I got all their labors, set up all the new migrants. You know, that's another thing, I really don't like the new steam labors, it doesn't make much sense to me. So I just kind of like, eh, here, but it, it, it seems more complicated than the old version. And we're also going to butcher, like, all the animals that those guys brought with them, because I don't really want to deal with them. Because, I mean, our, our main livestock is going to be giraffes. So all these other animals, eh, who cares? Eh, I don't. And so yeah, we also turned these into bedrooms for everyone else because it's like, eh, <laughs> need the space, honestly. Okay, okay. So in the last migrant wave, we got a hunter, and usually I don't freaking like let them hunt. But I figured, okay, what the hell. So this guy, or the girl, has already killed a giraffe. And now it's uh, hunting an aardvark. And I, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't think the aardvark's going to make it. Like, ugh. But yeah, it's already killed a freaking giraffe. <laughs> With just bronze bolts. That's, that's pretty good. Let's see how this freaking hunt goes. Okay, so she's firing, firing, and she kills it. How did it die? The flying brown bolt strikes the aardvark in the head, chirping, chirping the muscle, chipping the skull, and tearing the brain. Damn. Good work, Momas. Balanced the road. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, guys. We just got our first <laughs> freaking strange mood. Usherer, Lil Lar, Rubble, Boyer withdraws from society. A new migrant, a new migrant. Uh, let's see, where is he? Where is he? Boyer. We have a new migrant. <sighs> Particularly secretive. So let's follow him. What is he doing? Oh, does he want like a a bow workshop, maybe? I'll go build him one uh, outside. 
Ah, uh, yes, it appeared that he did need a Boyer's workshop. And you know, this is going to be interesting because I've never had a Boyer uh, make an artifact before. It looks like he has begun his mysterious construction with coffee wood logs, avocado wood logs, rambutan wood logs, and cryolite blocks. Er, you sure? Lil Lar Rubble. Boyer has created Dast Fur, a coffee wood blow gun. Not even a fucking crossbow, a blow gun? He offers it to the sounds of toes. That's fucking sick as hell. Dast Fur. This is a coffee wood blow gun. All craft worship is of the is of the highest quality. It is decorated with coffee wood and encircled with bands of round cryolite cabochons. This object is adorned with hanging rings of rambutan wood. On this item is an image of dwarves and avocado wood. The dwarves are traveling. The artwork relates to the foundation of the musical, The Beautiful Sounds of Poets by the Sound of Toes. In the early spring of 275. Damn. A blowgun. Huh. Well, I already got a pedestal uh, being made for it, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, we'll definitely... Uh, I think... If we go in here, we can... Brace a little bit, but like right there. Or so, yeah. And build a pedestal. You need to display object me. Yes, I, I do have one. <sighs> you freaking liar. And you know, I think it's deserving of a nickname. Creating the first artifact in the fortress. And you know, maybe we have a bow squad. Maybe we make some of our dwarves archers now, considering now that we have a legendary boyer. Oh, and its name is Narrow Beasts. The I shall name you Narrow Beast. Wow. Okay, that's a that's an okay name. Shit. Yeah. What do you like? Like, what's your Oosh Rarar? Likes talc, zinc, tanzanite, guava, wood, wood, gigantic squid leather, the color vermilion, battle axes, catapult parts. Bilious for their ability to swing through the trees and the sound of s the sparkles of music. I don't, I don't know what a bilious is. He is skinny, has a square chin, his very long beard is braided, his sideburns are clean shaven, his very long mustache is neatly combed, his short hair is neatly combed, his nose is slightly hooked, his hair is dark chestnut, his skin is iku. Well, I think I found your nickname, buddy. Your name for trading a oh, blowgun. Your name is now Gunner. I think that's a pretty apt name, don't you think? Oh, he even has a wife. Okay, and uh, we just put the vultures as a kind. Of, uh, it's kind of like our gate guardians. I don't know. I mean, they'll be able to like. Uh, I don't know what they'll be able to do, honestly. Look cool, I guess. That's the most important thing of all. Oh, yes, and we also got, like, the blueprints slash floor plans for our uh, stone mason guild. So what I'm thinking is, uh, we dig it down one. Okay. And then, floor here, floor here. And then have like a top floor up here. And all I'm saying. All I'm freaking saying. It's because I, I don't know. I think it'd be cool to have it be like kind of like sunken in a bit. I don't know. This came to me in a dream. Oh yes, and we actually got our bedroom situation all settled. And you know, it's it's cramped. I'll give it that, but 
I think that's just the way we're gonna do things around here. I don't, I don't know. Try something else. Oh, and it looks like the human caravan has arrived from Anthath Thanat. Neat. Let's hope their elephants don't like explode and leave all their treasure on the ground like last time. <laughs> um, pretty much all we traded from the humans were instruments, some freaking uh, drinks, and uh, we also bought like uh, a couple freaking like weapons from them to use in like a trap. Uh, what did we buy from them? A horn bland Santa. This is the finely crafted horn blend Santa. The body is made from horn blend. The strings are made from kangaroo demon silk. The plectrum is made from green glass. The Santa is a large stationary string instrument with a stone body. The instrument rests flat as the musician picks the three strings with the glass plectrum. The musician can alter the pitch of the string by stopping it against the body. Tune in and is possible with adjustable bridges. Kangaroo demon silk. Wow. Oh god damn it. Another honey badger. And a ch what? Screw the honey badger. We just got uh, like a herd of giant tortoises. A medium sized reptile with a large shell. It can shoot to its shell to escape predators. Oh my god. Screw the drafts. Screw the vultures. If we can capture giant tortoises, we're going to be doing giant tortoises. That's... Oh, they look so fucking cool. Okay, the honey badger is fighting with our llama. <laughs> I'm going to send in the military squad to deal with it. Go kill it. And hopefully the merchants can help too. Okay, I think, yeah, it's dead. Uh, let's go look at the combat. Right. How hurt are you? Yeah. This Soldel nation shot, the alpaca, is freaking strong as hell. It killed the honey badger, too. It. Oh, shit, you're in. Okay, are you injured? Oh, okay, thank fuck. Think fuck the baby wasn't injured. The alpaca kicks the honey badger in the lower body with her left front foot. The alpaca kicks the honey badger in the left rear paw. Okay, so pretty much the alpaca just like kicked the honey badger to death, which Yeah, I mean kinda what I expected. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention I did end up putting uh dast fur on a jet pedestal in the middle of our uh, current like main fortress. Eventually I am gonna freaking move it down here of course, but you know, right now. <gasps> no, one of the hunter, the hunter killed the giant, killed one of the giant tortoises. Oh. Why? No. <laughs> oh. What did it even do to you? Oh. That's freaking cruel. That is cruel. Okay, we just butchered the freaking giant tortoise. And we got a giant tortoise skull. I'm gonna turn that into a totem. Okay, never mind. It's. Yeah, make totem. And repeat it. Oh, man. Okay, she's using the uh, giant tortoise skull. A giant tortoise skull totem. R.I.P. little brother. Okay. You know. Uh, I said. 
I don't I don't know if I told you guys, but I think during the winter we're gonna have like a break. Like we're we're just gonna settle down. It's not gonna be a whole lot of work to be done. It's not gonna be a I don't wanna make it I don't know if this is gonna be a yearly sort of thing. But you know, I for two years I'd say we got a lot done for being a bunch of stinking poets and bards. Bards, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make everything like I closed all the jobs. Shouldn't be any jobs anymore. And we're just gonna sit back, relax, let our dwarfs play, eat, sing, dance. You know, do what this fortress is really all about. Oh, and if you can see here, uh, our like uh, bath is getting sort of filled, just a little bit, and it seems to be working. We just need to get more water in there. Two out of seven is what we're looking for, but every time like we try that, it keeps getting freaking. <laughs> I don't know. Is there not enough uh, people throwing water in? As soon as we start our little freaking break, and I know it's not winter yet, it's late summer, but you know what? There's quite a lot of unhappy dwarves, I figured might as well start dirty. We get an, our second strange mood, toss it, full lish abash. Carpenter withdraws from society. Now my good friend, <laughs> toss it to deep axes, oh my, oh. This is going to be a good one. I can feel it. <laughs> what you out searching for? Avocado wood logs? Okay. And it has claimed a carpenter's workshop. And now he's requesting something. What is he requesting? Pictures of a forest? Sh ooh, shining bars of metal. Ugh. That's gonna be a tough one. We don't really uh, have any metal, <laughs> but don't worry, we'll get she has some metal. <laughs> okay, guys. So uh, there was supposed to be a strange mood. However, it glitched out. Like, cause he had all this stuff, and. He had all this stuff that he needed. Uh, however, it like glitched out and he went insane and then my game crashed. So... <laughs> so I used uh, DF hack to fix it. I just removed his strange mood. Because you can like take him out of their strange mood. So I just did that. Uh, crucify me for cheating, I don't care. Cause it was it was weird like before you used to be able to like so he he wanted avocado wood I, f I forbid it and I was like okay let's go grab something else and he just went insane that used to work in old dwarf fortress I'm not insane however I guess it didn't work doesn't work anymore I learned that lesson so I won't do it again but yeah I I felt it wouldn't be a good story if oh yeah he uh he went insane because, oh yeah, it glitched out, like. <laughs> so, um, I don't, I think, I don't think I figured, I don't think I told you guys that. During, like, the entire, uh, season of autumn, we're just gonna be taking a break. Because, you know, I know it's a lot of unhappy dwarves, and I figured, you know what, they deserve a break. They've been working hard for two years, covered in human blood. They deserve a little break. And I don't know if this is going to become a yearly tradition or anything, like a celebration. 
However, I mean, I figure uh, that if we do it next year, then it will become a tradition and we'll give it a, a name. Anyways, uh, see you guys then. So, you know, during this downtime of the autumn season, I've decided to look at some of the dwarves' food. This right here is a dwarven beer roast. This is a stack of 44 dwarven beer roast. And ingredients are minced pond turtle, minced pond turtle, <laughs> minced custard apple, cider, and minced dwarven beer. How do you mince a liquid? I don't know. And this one right here is prepared aardvark spleen roast. This is a stack of two prepared aardvark spleen roast. Ingredients are minced finger line, minced prepared reindeer lung, minced horse sweet, sweet bread, and minced prepared aardvark spleen. You know, very savory sort of dish. Okay, now this one is, you know, uh, very unappetizing. This is a stack of 34 cow towel roast. And ingredients are minced horse towel, minced reindeer tallow, minced alpaca tallow, and minced cow tallow. Mm -mm -mm, nothing like fat. <laughs> nothing like this straight fat to, you know, f to make you feel alive. Oh yes, and I wanted to show you guys that our little uh, pool to like clean our doors off is working. So we filled it with buckets till three out of seven. Uh, just deep enough so that it won't evaporate, but it also won't drown our dwarves. So they walk through here and they leave their human blood here to be easily cleaned up. And it's also guarded over by our two pet vultures. And oh my god, guys, Vulture ha uh, has claimed a carpenter's workshop. And he's already begun a mysterious construction. Okay. What is he using? Just avocado wood log, and he's going at it. <laughs> and he is, it's a fey mood. So yeah, this avocado wood logs. And I was looking at over like our food and we have an obscene fucking amount of pond turtle. Sixty eight and eighty five and like male and female. And then I think if you go uh here you like type in shell like shells or body parts, body parts. 287 pond turtle shells. <laughs> like, okay. I'm pretty sure we've decimated the turtle population here. <laughs> and it has just become early winter, however, I think. I'll let the dwarves relax a little bit more, and oh my god. Vulture to Lest Sterol. Militia Commander has created who Mam Gauz Diem Zasit Tagez Backsat Backust uh, Avocado Wood Bucket Okay, I mean it's a bucket, it can't be Can't be that cool, but we'll look at it. What is it called? I shall name you Dragon Raise the Knife Holes of Urges. A wooden bucket, really, and you name it the Dragon Raise the Knife Holes of Urges. <laughs> well, here it is, ma'am. Gaz Edom Zasset Tagez Baxut. This is an avocado wood bucket. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. On the item is an image of gizzard stones and avocado wood. What a fucking lame artifact. With like the coolest name ever. <laughs> I mean, I, good good job, buddy. <laughs> I, I why? Why would he? Uh, with gizzard stones or gizzard stones? Oh yeah, I love gizzard stones. Put that on there. I give it a cool ass name. Oh. <sighs> I will put it. I don't know. We'll put it in our tavern, I guess. So we can put it down here. 
And look at this, this old man will build Gurgoth. He's grown to become a dwarven child. <laughs> no longer the baby. And he's, oh. I feel good. What equipment he was picking up? Oh yeah. Not be naked. Oops. And we all... Eh. And he goes, plays, make believe, in a pile of human blood. <sighs> all, all, and only wearing a giant cave spider silk trousers and a l leather glove. <laughs> oh, you dwarves. You dwarves. My god, look at this. Two babies born at the same time. Olin Kiskel the Dickish has given a birth to a boy, and Zasset Olan Letmos has given birth to a boy. Both boys. <laughs> yep, oh my god. <laughs> no. Do some paddle grasps. And <coughs> I <laughs> murdered Galley. And oh my god, he's the son of Gunner. The first uh person to have an artifact in the fortress. That's that's the nice. Glad to see him doing well. Speaking of that, let's assign this. Fucking <sighs> the bucket to <laughs> to, to the tavern. To the, uh. Oh my god. What is happening? So we had two boys and then two girls born. <gasps> Bomber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess giving the dwarves all that time to socialize, you know, the did wonders, I guess. <laughs> God. Okay, so Irith Hallglazes. We don't know any of those guys. <laughs> no. No, you. No. Vutak of Vabugon Orban Ched Orbing Orbinched But wow four babies born like on the same day I've never seen that happen in Dwarf Fortress before. Anyways, I was <coughs> before we were interrupted by a by a explosion of of uh, babies. I was working on getting our water trap all finished, and it's uh, it's getting there. After we mine this out, we're gonna like mine channel this out and put the bridge up, and it'll be done. We just then we just have to channel this out, and you can start filling it with water. I've also been making sure to smooth out all the walls. Now we're going to leave this section here. And I actually remember this section too. But yeah. So I want to put like some statues of the dwarves laughing in there. Uh, yeah, 12. 
itself should be good enough and we're gonna specify stone and I don't care make it out of limestone I guess but the image will be of <coughs> specify a new image creature a dwarf and it's laughing because I want if anyone who comes in here to see it and to see this and be like look up and they see the rush of water and I'll see a bunch of dwarves laughing at them I think it'll be funny Anyways, uh, it's not completely finished, but we got it all mined out. We just have to put the bridge in. And these are the laughing doors I was talking about. But anyway, I think, you know, we got a lot accomplished this episode. Uh, so, this is like five hours of footage, by the way. I don't, I don't know how long it is exactly uh, when I release it, because I'm going to cut it down even more a bit, but... Right now I have like an hour of footage, so yeah, I think I think it's been good. So, uh <coughs> and I've really been enjoying drawing. I, I got a drawing tablet, so I think for this episode all the drawings will be in uh, online. I mean, uh, digital, because I want to get used to it and like try it out a bit, but. Yeah, we got like, a lot accomplished today. We started working on it on our uh, at, like so for this side, uh, it's gonna be like oh the caravans come through this side, enemies come through this side, it's filled with traps and shit. Uh, we finished our craft work and like carpenter slash jeweler workshop. Planned out our uh, mason workshop. Had our first artifacts n nearly doubled our po po doubled our population. Uh, got our bridges all fixed. Got this all muddied. Got a couple of vultures. Started work on our tavern. <laughs> I think it's been a successful episode. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.